Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept each and every one of our ibadat, our actions that are done sincerely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all our righteous deed that we are carrying out this month in the month of Ramadan. As we know as Muslims or as human being in our day-to-day -day life, there are rules that govern the way in which we conduct ourselves in society. And these rules to define the things which we are expected to do. Like for example, while we grew up in the previous generation or even in our current time today, as parents or as adult, one of the etiquettes which is implemented and which is taught towards the young generation is that you, you keep quiet whenever an elder is speaking or you respect the elders. So just as like in our daily life, we have the do's and the don'ts that we follow and which is which becomes a norm among the area and the community that we live. Similarly, in the month of Ramadan, being the holy month of Ramadan, it has rules and it has manners in which Muslims should conduct themselves. And conducting ourselves in these manners will help us to reap all the benefits that associate with this month of Ramadan. So inshallah, in this video, I will mention a few of the do's and don'ts which we should follow in the month of Ramadan to be able to achieve the full benefit and to be able to reap the full reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we talk about Ramadan, the very first thing that comes to our mind and the very first thing that we think about is that of fasting. And when we fast, which means we abstain from eating and drinking. And yes, this has to do with what Ramadan is all about. This is a primary aspect of Ramadan, abstaining from food and drink. But there are many other things as Muslims which we must not do during the month of Ramadan. Like for example, we keep in mind that the month of Ramadan it has to do with patience, it has to do with forgiveness, because it's a month that we bear patient upon the difficulty that befall upon us. It is a month that we ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we also forgive others. And it is a month that goodness is increased. We do more goodness so that our rewards will get multiplied. And similarly, so, so as a Muslim now, anything that promotes goodness or anything that promotes the aspect of patience and the aspect of forgiveness, we try to hasten towards those things. And anything that hinders one from these good deeds or hinder one from achieving any good things, we should abstain those things. So these do's and don'ts, they're just a list that basically things that we do or we should do to be able to achieve goodness and things that we should avoid from be, to be able not to get any bad days into our account and the very first primary aspect is that of Ramadan which is a month we fast so we have to fast let us do our fasting and secondly is that it is a month in which Quran was revealed so a month that we shall often recite the Quran so do as reciting do recite the Quran as much as we can as often as possible let us make it our own aim and our own goal that in this month of Ramadan we should be able to memorize some portion of the Quran which we never memorized before. The third part, the third do is that let us offer our five times salah. Do offer our salah, five times salah, and if possible, the brothers at the masjid, which is compulsory for us. And the five times salah is compulsory out of Ramadan. But if we may be negligent out of Ramadan to miss our walk, to miss our time of salah, let us do that in the month of Ramadan. The fourth do is that let us do follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many good practices in Islam which is not compulsory. It is just a practice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we do them as Muslims, our reward multiply or we get extra reward which is benefiting for us. It doesn't benefit anyone else but ourselves. And we all work to build our akhirah, our hereafter. So let us follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as much as possible in this month of Ramadan. Let us implement a sunnah and a practice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah is vast. He lived for a period of 23 years of prophethood. So imagine each and every day of his life how many action will have been there from his sunnah. And <clears throat> these are some of the brief aspects of which we should do in the month of Ramadan. Things we should try to achieve in the month of Ramadan. And then a few points of don'ts which we should avoid in the month of Ramadan is that we know obviously when it comes to fasting, we, we have to fast, abstain from food. So we don't consume food 
or water during the fasting period. If we may be someone who is Muslim and we have a sickness or an illness that that causes us to avoid fasting on that day, let us also not go out in public and be eating and drinking in public when we know the, the time of the month of Ramadan and other Muslims are fasting. Let us also abstain that during the time period, even though we cannot fast, let us abstain it in public if we were to eat, eat hiddenly, eat secretly, eat within your the home, the boundaries of your home so others cannot see, those who are fasting cannot see. Another don't is that don't listen to music. Music in and out of Ramadan is haram. But being the month of Ramadan, being the month that Allah subhanahu has mercy multiplies, let us not waste our time into listening to few futile songs and futile music. Instead, let us devote our time to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us devote our time instead of listening to music and songs, let us listen to the Quran, the recitation of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third do, don't is that let us do, don't waste time. Do not waste time. This time that we have is a man, it is a trust. And the month of Ramadan being so virtuous and being so blessed, instead of us wasting our time sleeping, making more, having more excessive sleep and watching television. And for those brothers, we know the cricket is on the IPL. You wasting our time watching three hours of cricket. Utilize those time in constructiveness. Utilize those time to benefit us, to benefit us in good deeds, the things that will be recorded for our benefit in the hereafter. And remember Ramadan, the month of Ramadan for us to be able to achieve taqwa, it's about nurturing our discipline and nurturing ourselves internally to make ourselves spiritually better. And the last don't I would like to mention is let us not gossip. Do not gossip and do not idle talk and have waste talk. Let us utilize that time instead of having idle talk, gossip and speaking bad about people behind their back or backbiting. All of these things are prohibited. And the time of Ramadan, let us not utilize our time into idle talks. Instead, use those time to make sacred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are to talk, Utilize those time to remind one another, as Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, as we are looking at the do's and don'ts of Ramadan, the things, like I said, these are not compulsory, but these are things that if we do it, it helps us to reap more benefit and reap more rewards from the month of Ramadan. And if we abstain from these things, it helps us to also keep our Ramadan and keep our fasting intact. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can derive and take the best out of our fasting. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that also we live we lived through this month of Ramadan whilst forgiving each and every one and also get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to accept our a'mal, our fast and our salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.